back up your email using Thunderbird. Hi everyone, Leo Notenboom here for askleo.com. If you are watching this on YouTube, by all means, when we're done, make sure to hit that like button so that YouTubers and others will know that this was helpful and it'll help them find the answers they're looking for when they're searching on YouTube. So many years ago, after Ask Leo began, I received what I would call a panic-stricken email from someone who had lost access to his email account. Now, this was above and beyond the ordinary disaster because he had apparently stored his thesis in the account. And as a result, uh, he had lost it. I'm hoping that you are not saving documents that are that incredibly important in only one place. You're not backed up if you are. Um, and I certainly hope you're not using your email account as a place to store critical documentation for the long term. However, uh, it is possible, in fact, it's even likely that you have important emails, pictures, whatever, that are in your email account and only in your email account. And it's very likely that they are in your online account. If you're using things like outlook.com or gmail.com, yahoo.com, etc. for mail, you may have them in only one place, your online email account. Let's back that up, shall we? So I'm going to bring up uh, Outlook.com so you can see the email account that we're working with. I'll use Edge to go ahead and do that. As you can see, I have one very important email in my inbox, and you'll notice that it is only in my inbox. It is not stored somewhere else. I don't have it backed up. So what we're going to do is use a desktop email program called Thunderbird to download a copy of my email to my PC. The email you see right now in Outlook.com is stored only in Outlook.com. And if I were to lose access to my Microsoft account, I would lose this email forever. So we're gonna make a copy. The way to do that is download Thunderbird, which of course is thunderbird.net. It is completely free. You can see we're downloading it here. We'll click on it to run, and the installer begins. Uh, you have, of course, the option to donate to Thunderbird for their work. Um, that's totally up to you, uh, but we're actually done with the Thunderbird website, so I'm going to close that tab and minimize my browser. So now we're in the setup wizard. What we will do is we will run through that. As always, choose custom whenever you're setting up any software on your machine just to expose all of the potentially hidden options that you might not otherwise have the opportunity to select. The installation location is fine. Uh, if you want icons, that's fine. Uh, I can put them on the desktop or in my Start Menu Programs folder. I strongly recommend that you use the Start Menu Programs folder, but I'm going to go ahead and let it put an icon there. And I am going to let Thunderbird become my default mail application. That's it. That's all there is to installing it. Now we have to configure it. I'm going to hit finish since it is going to launch Thunderbird for me. So we're going to set up an existing email account. This is the account that I already have at hotmail.com. You can see it's already filled in a name for me which is fine. That's the name I actually have associated with that account. The email address, askleo at hotmail.com. And now I do need to enter the password for that account. And I'm just going to go ahead and paste it in from my LastPass uh, repository. Since this is something that um, is not a web form or an application that LastPass recognizes, the way to do this, of course, would be simply to copy paste the password from your LastPass vault into the application asking. And remember the password. Now, since this is Hotmail, Thunderbird will actually do the right thing. The same is true for a lot of the major providers. It already knows the correct settings for these. We want remote folders. This is important because what this does is this will allow the email to remain on the service. In other words, you would continue to use Outlook.com the way you've always used Outlook.com to access your email. 
IMAP will make a copy of the folders down here on this PC as a backup, which is exactly what we're looking for. We'll go ahead and click done. And it failed. Now, the reason that it failed is that it's actually wanting to use two factor authentication because there is no way here for that two factor authentication to happen. It's actually failing the login. Configuring manually actually won't help either. So what we need to do is something ever so slightly different. I'm bringing up the browser again, and this time I need to go into the account settings for the account that I am trying to configure. In security, advanced security options, you can see that I have the two-factor authentication set up. Two-step verification is enabled. It's app passwords that we're looking for here. In order to bypass or not require two-factor authentication, you actually end up creating a password for whatever it is you're doing. And there's a password. Now, of course, this is obfuscated here in the video, but this password is now associated with this account and should work for Thunderbird. If I go back over to the Thunderbird configuration and enter in this new password and hit continue, it's done. So we'll set as default and we are now in Thunderbird. Once again, I'm going to minimize the browser to get that out of the way and make Thunderbird a little bit bigger. But here you can see that I have, in fact, the message that was also in my Outlook.com inbox. Now, the only thing that's missing so far, we've got our email getting backed up. In other words, any email that shows up in your inbox or in any of the folders that you manipulate on Outlook.com will get replicated down here to Thunderbird as long as Thunderbird is running, of course. So I do recommend that you run Thunderbird periodically. However, the one thing that's missing here is we have not backed up our contacts. Contacts are kind of like the Internet's horrible secret. They're handled very, very poorly. So what I want you to do to at least back them up is go back to your mail on the web. In this case, it's Outlook.com. If your other email service providers have similar functionality, down at the bottom, we're going to click on People. And this opens up Outlook.com's contacts. Over on the right hand side, you'll see that there's a manage item and we're going to export contacts. We want to export all contacts and it's downloading them to a file. This has been downloaded into my downloads folder. You can then make sure to save a copy of that periodically. I do this on all of my primary accounts. Once a month, I download the contacts and back them up somewhere securely. If I were to lose access to this account, I could create a new account and upload these contacts to restore my list of contacts in my address book. Like I said, make sure to run Thunderbird periodically. You can leave it running in the background. There is no harm in doing so, but just make sure that it is periodically running so that it has an opportunity to download all of the email that has accumulated in your account since the last time you ran it. Your email is now backed up. I hope that was helpful. For the article on which this tutorial was based for updates for related links and more, visit askleo.com slash 17883. I'm Leo Notenboom, and this is askleo.com. Thanks for watching. Thank you.